uh, you, you, if there's a follow, then a blue yeti gets its wings and That's it right. flies all around my studio and it'll pick up every noise in my studio. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> you know, this this poor little blue yeti probably gets too much flack. But Jim, let's highlight it. Let's talk. Let's talk because a lot of podcasters start here. Yeah, they do. You know, and I, I, look, I've got I started one. there. I have yeah, one over, I've got over one. there. I could go grab it. Yeah. I'll go grab it just to prove it. No, don't do that. No, I'm kidding. We can't. If we have two blue yetis on one live stream, like the internet will explode. Um, so, listen, a lot of people start with this, and I'm not. I'm. I'm not telling you that that's you know that that's a bad thing. Ooh, that's an actual blue it's blue a yeti. blue blue yeti. That's right. Yes, that's Yeti Inception. Yetception. But um, here's the thing: it's a USB mic. Okay, so meaning you can plug it into your computer. But you can't plug two of these into one computer. So if you've got two people, you can't do it. But if you've got two people that want to do a podcast, you can still use this mic because it has multiple directions that you can use for it. There's there's different directions you can set. Okay, here's here's um, truth number one about the Blue Yeti. If you're speaking into the top of it, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. The way to speak into the Blue Yeti, if you have it set on the main setting, which is this one that looks like a, I don't know, it looks like a, uh, I don't want to say the wrong thing here, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's this one, okay? You speak into this. That's where you speak, right into here. It receives your voice here. And as a podcaster, the best possible version of your voice is the closest that you are to your mic. However, don't speak directly into the mic. You see, Jim and I have, the, have our mics kind of pointed towards our, our mouth, but we're not speaking directly into it. And the reason why is because there's air that comes out of your mouth when you say words like pizza. And those are called plosives. And T is another word. If you say traffic and things like that, those are just extra air that comes out. And that goes into the diaphragm of your mic, and it just, um, it just, uh, Janaid says that's a heart. Thank you. Thank you. It's like an upside down heart. It's kind of a fluffy heart, though, Janaid. Super Janaid's in the chat in LinkedIn, uh, Polar Pickup. You know, see, this is, uh, let's, there's people that are smarter than us, Jim. This is why, this is why we love, we love doing this. Tealman's, yes, that's how we say it. Thank God. If you haven't followed us yet on, on, on Amazon, please do. Um, because every time you follow Jim, what happens? A blue Yeti gets its wings. A blue Yeti gets its wings. That's right. So, um, that's where, that's where that goes. So we're not going to spend a ton of time talking about a blue Yeti. Cause right now my stream deck is deciding it's just going to take its sweet time to switch scenes which is another bonus that's happening today. There it is, now, now it decides it's gonna switch and now I'm gonna show you the Blue Yeti. Okay, so you're gonna plug it into the bottom. It has headphones at the bottom. Those are used to monitor what's coming out of the microphone itself, okay? And so, you know, that polar pattern where you speak into the front of it, that's one way, but you can also make it so that you can speak out of it this way and that way. So if so, you're maybe sitting across the desk from somebody, you know, like Jim. Maybe you and I are gonna do it like this, <laughs> demonstrating that. Um, and so this volume knob on here that controls the volume for the for the uh, for the headset. So that's not going. That does nothing to do with how it's going to broadcast or how it's going. How your voice is on on the actual podcast. And there is there, another thing, it's got a mute button, which is nice to have a mute button on a microphone. However, it's pretty tactile. It makes a little noise. And this microphone picks up a lot of stuff. And so what a lot of people don't realize when they get a microphone like this, even though it can work for you, you got to make sure that the number one thing, which is free, is to go and record in a small dead room. And so yeah. um, if you record in a small dead room, um, it will, it will kill the noise. You know, I've got all this stuff that's hanging around me and this, this thing that's lighting up and all that stuff. It's got sound treated stuff inside of it. 
I've got carpeting underneath me. It's a small room. If I'm going to record an audio podcast, I want to get into a closet with lots of clothes around it. Like who cares, right? It's just an audio podcast. And so um, lots of times you don't even need like a super expensive mic. Um, right now I need a super expensive stream deck because I hit a button like five minutes ago and it hasn't switched, Jim. This is like, this is like well, the most... Chris, we, yeah. we, we got to give some wings to Blue Yeti because Junaid just followed us on Amazon. Junaid, where have you been all our lives? Oh, man. Yeah, I wish I could play that sound effect for you. Uh, but we disconnected our, uh, the Zoom Pod Track 4 because nobody could hear Jim. This is, this is the, like, <laughs> this is the most troublesome. Uh, oh, we love you too, Janae. Um, thank you for this. Uh, that, that is definitely Jonathan. Um, cause, yep. uh, he helped me get a really great studio, uh, set up. Thank you for that, Jonathan. Yeah. And your podcast sounds awesome. Um, I haven't listened to it in about a month or so, but I hope it's, uh, hope it's going well for you. Um, and um, then, uh, Junaid says, let's talk about the real gear for starting a podcast. Yeah, exactly. Like here I am talking about this. I'm serious, Jim. Like my stream deck is frozen. So, I'm so you might sure. actually, yeah, yeah, you a, might have to like idea. click through the scenes and instead of using the yeah. stream deck. It's kind yeah. Of let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. You know, we're just going to hack some stuff together with popsicle sticks and glue. Cause that's, that's, uh, that's what we do. And uh, Junaid, you should know, uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff Ettringer is oh, Make Anything Easy is over on Amazon as well. And uh, he is like shouting you out. He's giving you more praises than he is of us. So, you know, you've made us very jealous. Very, very jealous, my friend. Um, no, I'm kidding, of course. Um, trying to find, there it is. I'm, I'm not even using my stream deck anymore for whatever reason. I may, I may have to unplug it, but yeah. Um, Jim, I hope my storefront, oh, Janae just jumped in. There he is. There he is down here in the chat on yep. Amazon hacks and hobbies. Definitely. Geraldine Wilkins. Hello. That reminds me, Jim, we should talk really quickly before we get into the next item about VidFest because, uh, we have a VidFest speaker that's in uh, the house, Geraldine Wilkins, who's going to be presenting, speaking at uh, VidFest. Um, we have an entire day uh, that Jim and I are heading up and uh, coordinating at VidFest. It's in Orlando on Friday, May 27th. It's an all-day event, and there's going to be a bunch. We haven't leaked out all of the speakers just yet, um, yeah, but I think a lot of people do know that we've got some, we've got some great people, some great Amazon influencers that are going to be joining us. Uh, doing some, it's going to be a blast. And so there's a lot of people um, that are here that are Amazon influencers. Junaid Ahmed's going to be speaking at PodFest, so he'll be there. Um, and uh, Geraldine is, is excited uh, for it. And um, love the unintended consequence of technology is what uh, is what Jeff said. So man, um, it's so great to uh, to see you, Jeff. I know we. Uh, we uh, kind of live in the same area, but uh, we have to uh, we have to get a get a coffee or a beverage of, of some uh, some kind very soon. So, Jim, what's next in the carousel? We got to. Well, I think what we want to talk about since we're talking about podcasting is, you know, just like with video, the most important thing for a podcaster is your audio. And so we have several microphones that uh, that we are are using and they're all going to kind of give you. A different feel so as an example right now what i'm talking into and i think you have it in here is the samson q9u mm -hmm. and so this is a dynamic microphone uh now what i like about it similar to the q2u is it can be usb or xlr now what does that mean with the usb microphone you're able to plug it straight into your computer in most cases most of them come with a USB A input as opposed to USB C, so you may need to get a uh, interface because in some cases, as these newer computers don't always have that. But with the XLR, you're going to want a sound interface. You know, like Chris said, he's using the Apollo. He was using the PodTrack Eight earlier. Uh, we also I use the Focusrite Two I Two, which allows me to do two things. Now, what's cool about this? Not that I need to do this because we already couldn't hear me. 
there's a button on my microphone. So when I hit it, and I can just click that on and off so I don't have to go anywhere else. So that can be very handy. Um, it's This is a solid, solid microphone, as, as Chris knows. And we actually want to thank Samson actually reached out to us and provided us these uh, these microphones because we're big Samson fans. I've been using the Q2U for was probably at least two years before switching to the Q9U, but I use this one, the Q2U, just about everywhere. Uh, you know, it's great for traveling. I use it on my other computer, and uh, so I know I've been I've been real happy with that. I mean, Chris, I think you've been impressed as well at yep. uh, at the quality. Yeah, I like um, I like them, and and Jonathan Jonathan says he likes to use uh, Blue Yetis as paperweights. Um, yeah, actually, this is pretty sturdy. It can hold down lots of paper. The other thing I like about it is much like um, its counterpart, which I'm speaking into right now, which is the Shure MV7. Um, you you don't have to use a shock mount. Okay, so so now we're going to get into a little bit of the tech talk, and if people are looking at uh, potential microphones, like a dynamic microphone that they want to have. Um, that needs to be off of the off of your desk, right? Doesn't want to. You don't want it to be sitting on a on some sort of stand on your desk because you start tapping on your desk, clicking on your mouse. Those are vibrations. That's mm -hmm. sound. That goes good into your not like, always good vibrations. That's right. Sure. Which, by the way, the most popular song that ever featured a theremin is "Good Vibrations" by Beach Boys. Um, these are the only the kind of like use, this useless information you could get on Dealcasters, ladies and gentlemen. Now we do so, we do have a quick question. Jim Mullen wants to know, and, yep. and this is something that we can answer. He's like, D we're using a microphone like this. Do you need a power source or some kind of mixer? Jim, you do not. That is the beauty of the Q9U and the Q2U. If you're using USB and you plug it in your computer, that's giving it the power. You don't have to have an extra power source like there are other computer or i should say microphones that they call it uh is phantom power the right word chris that's right phantom phantom power is for more like condenser microphones it needs extra power um to to get what it what it it, it needs these are this is a dynamic microphone and your computer will power it or if you have if you want to use the xlr which is the uh, that that three that's a normal microphone um plug in you're going to be plugging that into an interface which gives it power so you don't need any extra sort of power source um this this microphone sounds amazing broadcast quality just plugging right into your computer it doesn't have other software at least proprietary Sam samson uh software um, that you can use with it. The Shure MV7, which is um, a little bit more of an expensive microphone from Shure, but it's very similar in, in what these do. Um, it, ha it has software where you can kind of adjust it, make your, make your voice lower, um, you, know, it, you know, change up the timbre. But what I was talking about as well is this thing that it's hanging from, you may think, well, that's just, you know, it's just like what it, ha it's, so it looks cool, right? So you can look like Jim Fuse, right? No, it's actually, it's called a yoke. And it actually is sock, uh, sh well, that's hard to say, shock absorbing. La, 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 la. Easy for you to say, Jim. Um, and so the, the Shure MV7 that I'm talking into has one as well. It's a yoke. And the Shure SM7B, which is also in the carousel, uh, which you see, that's the, that's the big boy, right? That's the one everybody you know, loves is, is that uh, Shure SM7B. That also features a yoke. But you don't have to worry about getting a shock mount. Other dynamic microphones, we talk about the Samson Q2U, Jim, and that's the one we recommend to, I mean, anybody who's starting out, I usually tell them, get that mic. Right. Not, only, not only is it affordable, it makes you sound great, but because you save a little money, where I think you need to spend a little money, and Jim, this is in the carousel, is a shock mount. And you don't have to spend a lot of this. This is, I think it's five, six bucks. This is from it's, Egg Snow. It's not nine ninety nine. It, okay. It. This is what you use to put your microphone in and basically it suspends it. And your microphone goes, you just, you just weave it in these things. And then you twist this onto a boom arm. And so that's just going to get your microphone suspended off of your desk. Plus, you can just move it or move it out of the way when you don't when you don't want it in the way. 
you don't have to worry about a microphone sitting in front of you the whole time, right? When you're when you're talking, you could use it, but um, but that that shock mount's necessary if you do buy a Samsung Q to you or a Audio Technica 2100, which we also have in the carousel. Very similar microphone. Some people prefer Audio Technica over Samson. Um, very, you know, to me, I can't tell much of a difference. I will tell you the Audio Technica 2100 is USB C. The Samsung Q2U is USB 2.0. So mm -hmm. if you already have a Mac and you just want to just plug it right into a USB C output, you may want to consider the Audio Technica 2100. But if you want to get the Samsung Q2U, um, you will need to get a, um, an adapter because you're the cable that you get only is USB 2.0. And of course you're going to get all, you're going to get the pop filter, which helps with your plosives. And so when you say make anything easy with pizza, make you will, uh, you'll not have plosives in your, and your podcast will not be ruined. Janae, thank you for stopping by, man. Thank you for stopping by. Um, okay. So in it to win it, in it to win a Tina, in it to win a Tina. I love that name. I can't believe I, I said it. I couldn't say shock absorption earlier in it to win a Tina, but I can say your name 10 times fast, but I won't until you follow us. And then <laughs> I still might not be able to, but uh, in it to win a Tina, I have a focus right and my uh, buyer dynamic from my recording days. What would you suggest to compliment? So Jim, you have a, you have a focus, right? You've got a Scarlet yes. and uh, you for a number of years used a particular mic. And so um, I'll let you, I'll let you talk a lot, a lot about this. Cause I mean, oh, you, it, we got to follow. There we go. All right. So in it to win a Tina, thank you for following a blue Yeti is getting its wings while Jim talks about how he used his focus, right? Scarlet and which microphone you prefer to use with this. Yes. So I, I have, the Focusrite 2i2. So, you know, back when I bought it, it was when we were like in person. And so because this is portable, you know, and I know people love the Rodecaster Pro, this is something I can take with me. And so my idea was I would be places, I could plug this into my computer, I could have two microphones, so I could have separate audio for myself and, and my guest. And so this being an XLR, the Samson Q2U works great with this, the Q9U, the, the Shure SM7B, and you can also plug your headphones into it if you wanted to monitor what's going on through the interface. It does come with software uh, that is free as well. And so I've, I've had That's this right. thing for, for, I don't know, probably three years now. It was the, the first thing I did to upgrade my audio because one of the things you're going to run into as a podcaster or live streamer when you're trying to create good audio and you're going straight off of your computer's audio that can turn into danger because sometimes it's and i know maybe it's an apple thing i don't know about pc the computer gets a mind of its own and will sometimes change your sound inputs and so that's where i think the focus right yeah or you know all these other interfaces are great what I do like about the focus, right? It's the portability. This is something you could travel with. I, you know, I, I'm using this with my Mac mini. I can easily use it with my, you know, MacBook pro or, you know, or even with a, uh, you know, a windows computer. It's, it's agnostic. Um, I'm not always thought of as that way anymore when it comes to, to Apple products. Um, and so I think where the advantage is, is you're going to get quality, quality sound, can control the sound. I mean, I even have a gain for both microphones. If I had two microphones in there that I could use. Yep. So I use the Samson Q2U um, in it to win it, Ina T. I got to say it 10 <laughs> times. In it to win a Tina, in it to win a Tina, in it to win a Tina, in it to win yes. a Tina, in it to win 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 a Tina. Boom. Yes. Someone and, who has great taste in interfaces. And, um, and then the yes. other thing is that these microphones, right? I switched to the Q9U because when once uh, I got this, it's like, hey, this is an upgrade. You know, I, you know, Chris says my voice still sounds like butter. So Oh, doesn't it sound like butter serene? Is it, is it serene? Is, it is that how? Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> yes, Serene G. Yes. And Thank another you, Blue G. Yeti gets its wings. Woo! <laughs> Oh. oh my gosh, the shake weight. Haven't heard that. In Rosalinda, a while. don't tempt me. I'll go get my shake weight. I'll go get my shake weight. And you know, in it to win it, Tina, you hadn't seen the shake weight. You might not even know, Serene, what a shake weight is. But uh, I say that for special. You want to. Um, <laughs> I say that for be, only special times. Old Steelcasters after dark. Was. Yeah. <laughs> but but with these microphones too, the ones that we're talking about, we don't have to get what's called a cloud lifter. And that can really, you know, that's the thing when you start stepping up to these really high level microphones beyond what we're talking about here today. And and they're and granted, right? It's all fine and well, but we want you to get started. So that's the beauty of the Q2U. The beauty of the Q2U or the ATR2100, which is currently highlighted in the um, in the carousel is because they are, I almost call it dual purpose. You can start out with USB because yep. you don't have the budget yet to get that interface. It, it grows up with you because yep. now it's just switching your cables to the XLR. You can still use that microphone. And because I think, you know, we all get, and I know Junaid ran, you know, had to run away, I guess, or ran out. He's probably tending his bees is getting some honey that you have to um you get gas gear acquisition syndrome and so i i think that's where people sometimes get into this whole thing of oh i've got to get a you know a two thousand dollar camera and i got to get a two thousand dollar computer and i've got to get you know a five six hundred dollar microphone no you don't no you don't you can start out you know, less than five hundred dollars, probably have everything you need to sound great, and then if you want to, to look great. Because I will say, and we just spoke recently at the uh, Interview Mastery Summit as part of uh, the Podcaster Editors Academy. A lot of podcasters, and this kind of goes back to what in it uh, in it to win it Tina T was saying, are live streaming their interviews so that they have the video to repurpose to right. promote their audio podcast. Chris and I both feel like that's becoming a bigger thing. In fact, a lot of our uh, episodes where we do interviews here on Amazon, we turn those into a podcast. So deal casters is a podcast. If you want to hear more available in the carousel and, Chris and some of our great guests, uh, you, you know, that that's, that's how we do it. So you just strip the audio but you got to have that good audio to start out with. Because, Chris, what do we say about bad audio? Audio, like nobody's sticking around. Like we, it's a perfect, uh, perfect situation. Like beginning of the show, nobody could hear Jim, right? We got all this, you know, flashy stuff going on. Nobody could hear Jim. Thank God for Jeff Ettringer and for Rome and our friends uh, the, uh, that, uh, you know, were sound checking for us uh, before everybody else got here and uh, gave the Blue Yeti its wings. Uh, but, you know, they stuck around. But if you don't know who you are and, and you can't hear somebody or their audio is crappy and it's like, you know, it's all kinds of noise and stuff, it's just too annoying. It doesn't matter how great things look. And so definitely if, if you know, and in, in, um, in it to win a Tina, that's 11. She said we can just call her Tina now. You've, you've I really graduated. like to say it all, though. I feel like I'm really on a, I'm flowing now with it, you know? I mean, <laughs> let's go with the brand fully, Tina. See, see what I did there? Um, what was I saying? Oh, so let us know what, uh, like, budget-wise. I mean, I think it's like, you know, the best mic for the money, in, in our opinion, is the Samsung Q2U because it's 70 bucks. And it is that good for that. Now there's less expensive microphones. I haven't used them. So that this is these, this is a microphone that I love and I have, I literally have four of them. I have four of them because I use them to record podcasts. And so Jim, I'd like to, uh, if we could segue into my favorite piece of gear in which I use my Samson Q to use uh, for, and that would be as I'm, like, I might as well just throw my stream deck out the window. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I have no idea why that's doing that, but uh, I'm going to go to my overhead scene. 
uh, which is right here. And uh, we're gonna talk about my favorite piece of gear. So Jim, you talked about travel and we're starting to travel mm -hmm. a little bit more now. We're gonna be traveling in, uh, you know, up to, to Orlando. And uh, so we wanna talk about the Zoom H6 really quickly. But mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of people that, that misunderstand uh, what this can actually do because it is not only just something that you can use to record podcasts, you can actually use it as an interface. And it has, it has really good preamps in it and it has all kinds of uh, functionality. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, is it weird that I keep these things in these bags when I first got it? No, it just why. shows you care. It does, it does. Um, yes, purple, Prince, are you a Prince fan, Tina? Um, and so here's what you get with a Zoom H6. First and, first and foremost, take a look at this thing. It is not that big. You, you could stick it in your pocket if you wanted to, your purse, but I, I keep it in this nice little, little holder, okay? But you can see it's, it's solid. It's solid as a rock. Um, takes four uh, AA batteries, and it has four inputs for microphones. And so you take a traditional microphone cable or a quarter inch cable, so you can plug an instrument into this. So let's say you wanted to record you playing guitar and singing. You could do that with this. And each one of those would have a separate track that's recorded onto a SD card that you put in the side of this. So this is your, this is a pocket studio essentially, but there's more, wait, there's more, all right? You get microphones with it. Yeah, I said it. When Jim and I go to Orlando, and in a couple weeks, we're going to go to San Diego to Social Media Marketing World. I'm going to bring this, and I'm going to record podcasts with it, and I'm going to record and do interviews with it because it comes with these extra pods. This one I had to buy. So this one doesn't come with it, and I'm going to show you what that one does, but I, I bought that one uh, as an extra one. And it comes with a pop filter because, if, if, because of course, you don't want to make anything pizza plosives. Um, and so what happens here is these are microphones. This is a microphone that you would use if you wanted to record like a concert. So like, let's just say you were at the soundboard um, and you wanted to record, uh, you know, uh, Prince when uh, God rest his soul, when he was still alive and you got to be able to, you know, record that. You could put this in here and it records a stereo mix of something. A lot of people will use this if there's some sort of presentation and they just want a solid recording of it. Um, in stereo, you can do that. And then there's this, which is what I'm going to be using to record. And you, uh, it's basically a mic that you could set to record on either side, like so. And so what you do is you use it to do interviews. So now you've got an interview mic and you're recording directly onto the device. And, uh, you know, so Jim, uh, you had a terrible game. Uh, what are you going to do next time, coach? You know, whatever. And you're doing a... You're doing an interview um, for that, which is which is great. And then I bought this puppy, and now it goes from four inputs and four separate tracks to now, boom, six. So I added an extra thing there. So you can have up to six people, which I've done a few times, recording a podcast, um, and you're getting separate tracks on there. Um, the one thing I will say is it does not come with a... Uh, it does not come with a uh, power adapter, so you got to have, like I have here, some extra batteries. So you uh, you definitely don't want to uh, run out of batteries when you're when you're recording a podcast. So that's the that, that is the Zoom H6. Highly recommended. Still one of my most favorite pieces of gear uh, that I own is is the Zoom H6. So there you go. Yes. Yeah, you've had that. I mean, for years, I would say right? Yeah. And I still use it. I love it. Yep. Yep. And what, if anything, the newer ones that came out have actually made it a little bit cheaper, but I would even say, would you, would you agree, Chris, that it has just about <coughs> the same capability as the, uh, the roadcaster? No. Um, the roadcaster and and, and um, I could switch over here to the pod track, even though um, we couldn't get to work for the live stream today. I was going to do a quick little demo of, you know, that looks like that's your input. 
that is the cable you need. It's a traditional microphone cable that you would use that plugs into, well, let me make sure I plug the right end into it. It plugs into it, but it also takes a quarter inch cable. So I can plug in one of my basses and, and play, uh, play a song. And I bet you would like that, Serene, if I were to uh, play you a little a funky jam. Um, and so, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to power that off. But yeah, I'll move this um, over and we can talk about the difference between... Let me power this down so I have enough battery. And then I did we'll see that over, over on LinkedIn, the question was... Does the can you get an external power supply for the Zoom H6? Yes, they do sell it. I I I I didn't buy one um, just because I use it mobily mostly, and so like I just didn't want to have to. It the batteries do last a long time. I will say that, um, and so I've never felt like I. Great, we're getting uh, on That's Amazon. Okay. Yeah, you got them blocked. I'm taking care of it. Yeah. Nice move. All right, so we'll go to my overhead, which is not working with my stream deck. So let me go to this look right here. All right, so this is another Zoom device, and this one's called the PodTrack P8. And uh, I, why, why do I have this and the H6? And a Rodecaster Pro also does, um, also does this. And so, the idea is it, this has you see all this has six inputs across the top, so I can I can automatically plug in six microphones if I want to here. But it also, um, if uh, Jim, you talked earlier about when Jim Mullen asked about microphones that might need uh, power, you can flip this over and it gives you phantom power for condenser microphones if you have that. So you could conceivably record like drums and things like that and condenser microphones for for things. Um, but what a lot of people use this for, and what I've got this hooked up is, you know, um, Clubhouse and uh, social audio apps. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times people will go on Clubhouse. Um, and if Jeff Ettringer, if you're in the house, uh, you probably are already doing this. Clubhouse Jeff, yes. Clubhouse Jeff, that's right. Um, you're probably likely already doing this. And that is um, taking um, this cable, which uh, is in the I don't know if we had had a chance to put it in the carousel or not, but it's a four, uh, basically four point cable. Okay, it's called a TRRS cable. Make sure you get one that has these three rings. Okay, and that's called a TRRS cable. And then you get one of these adapters. I keep on uh, holding the thing up to the wrong uh, camera. You get one of these little dongle adapters, which goes, you know, lightning, and that goes into your phone. Okay, so you plug this into this, and this goes into your phone, and it plugs into here. And now, if Jim and I wanted to make a call and have that person be on our show on the phone, we could do that. Um, and you, they would be able to hear us, and you would be able to hear them, and it would be just like a normal conversation. Um, that's a big deal because before that, before these devices had, this is called a mix minus is what that's called, which basically mm -hmm. means um, the other person would be hearing themselves twice. There would be like a really weird sort of uh, sound. And so the, doing mix minus like this and then bringing the volume up on the phone um, changes that takes that uh, takes that out uh, for you and of course they have all these little sound effects and stuff that you can uh, that you can use uh, for that as well um, and we're going to switch back to that and so generally you talked about the uh, the roadcaster pro um, Generally, the Zoom, uh, PodTrack P8, and Rodecaster Pro, uh, about the same same idea. One other thing I should make mention is it has separate uh, headphone mixes as well. Mm. So if you've got six people, um, there's going to be six different headphone mixes that they can they can adjust the the volume on. Oh, that's cool. So, and that's and that's with the P4 or the I mean the P8. Yes. Zoom also makes a P4, which is the four version, which is I think about half as much as the uh, as the P8. So right. 
Right. And we do, we do have a question over on LinkedIn. I'm going to put it up here. Uh, yep. Marcia, uh, Marcia Lee uh, mm -hmm. says, I have a blue Yeti for my Mac. Yep. What else do you suggest I need? I'm in and out of the call. Thanks. And so, uh, I mean, part of it, I guess we would kind of need to know what you're trying to do, because if you have a blue Yeti for your Mac, that mm -hmm. is a USB microphone. So you're really not going to need a sound interface. If you're going to be live streaming, you're going to want to get an external camera. And I say that only because with the Macs in general, I know the newer Mac supposedly has a better camera. It's still not as good as probably uh, most of your webcams or which I'm actually using, Chris, and you are as well. We're using our iPhones as cameras. You know, you've got a, you've got 4K cameras in these iPhones. As long as you get the right software, you can work. But here's the other thing to think about. The reality is most of these places where we're pushing video to, you can't go beyond 1080 anyway. So do you really need a 4K or an 8K camera? I, I mean, so that's something to consider. Yeah. So it may just be, depending on the age of your Mac, you might need a hub. And we don't have any in the um, in the chat itself, or I should say in the in the carousel. But uh, there's a couple of different ones. There's OWC, and then the other thing would be, uh, I think it's uh, Cal Digit. Both make great hubs that work with Mac, and some of them will you know let you add another monitor. Both Thunderbolt, you know, three and four USB A USB, you know. So these are all. You know, and when I'm talking about USB A, that's when you kind of have the wide um, interface. In fact, I think I have one. Hold on. Yeah, and we've got a question um, from uh, from Tina. Can you use an iPod as a camera? The answer is yes. Um, you would need a software called uh, Filmic Pro. Um, Camo is another application which allows you to uh, to do that. And uh, you can use your, like, it's mostly for iPhone. So when you say iPod, I don't know what generation. I mean, I guess they still make iPods. No, I don't know that they, I don't know if they make them, but they still work. So this is, you can see, this is what we consider USB-A. This is your bigger connector. And so that's, this is kind of older right now. We've got USB-C. Um, USB-C looks more like uh I've got, yeah, I've actually got a USB-C here. Let's see if I can bring it up. Um, this is USB-C. You can see it, you know, hold or your, sometimes hold I'll your hold, hand, hold your hand behind it and it'll autofocus on it. There we go. That's that focusing good. on your road. <laughs> I know, right? Hold on a second. Oop. iPod Touch. Boy, that's a, how, uh, how old is that iPod Touch? I didn't know they had cameras in those. There we go. So you can see the USB-C, also known as a Thunderbolt. Lift your, um, uh, lift your cable up towards your hand a little bit more because it's trying to focus. Yeah, I can only a little bit farther up because it's plugged in. I was just. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, so I was just trying to give a little bit of perspective. But that's where you get in the USB-A versus USB-C. USB-C is really becoming the Thunderbolt, right? It's the same thing. Different than the lightning cable that Chris was talking about. You know, the lightning cables, mainly an Apple thing, but a lot of them seem to be switching over. They're finally getting a little bit universal, right, with this Thunderbolt docks, which makes it better for all of us because then we have less uh, cords to worry about, theoretically. Um, I think I have cords all, all over the place. Um, yeah, so Tina bought it in April of 2021, um, and I, I had heard that they were still selling um, iPod uh, touches. And if it's got a working camera, basically, it's it, it. My guess is is that it has the same type of camera that an iPhone, uh, you know, particular generation of the time, eight or whatever, has. Um, and so I would. Uh, there's a there's a piece of software, Tina. It's called Filmic Pro. It's fifteen bucks. And what you do is you open it and then you use what's called a clean HDMI feed out of it and um, you can use that as a camera. The camera that I've got um, that's above me, and I will pull it up as soon as I can find it that is not on my stream deck. Can I mention that again? Did I mention my stream deck's not working? 
God. <laughs> um, here we go. So, Tina, this camera that I have above me is my iPhone 8. And I am streaming and using it as an alternate camera with something that's called NDI. And NDI is another um, app that uh, I bought, and I think it was 15 bucks. And software will recognize NDI over your Wi-Fi signal, and you can use this as a camera. iPad, same idea. Um, so that's, that's how that works. Um, you're, um, you, would, you need software like that in order to, uh, to use it as a, uh, as a camera. You won't be able to just plug your, your touch into your Mac, um, or definitely not into your PC, um, and have it work as a, uh, as a camera. You'll need an application, uh, which is uh, either NDI or Filmic Pro. Um, I use them both. They're both great um, applications, and you'll get a clean H HDMI, uh, uh, clean HD feed, meaning it doesn't have all of the, you know, sometimes on cameras you'll see um, lines. lines and uh, numbers and stuff like that. It takes all that away. That's what a clean HD feed from uh, from a device uh, does. Tina, I hope that helps you. Um, and if and if you have any questions, please hit us back. And, and, and Chris, uh, um, yeah. I don't know if you want to show real quick, and I can also give them another option um, if you want to put me where I can do a, uh, the overhead share. Yeah. And I know. I know. Got to go. give you. Yeah. All right. And so I'm using a program called Reincubate Camo. You have to hardwired into your computer, but I believe it'll work on PC or Mac. What I like about it, it gives me a desktop control. So as you can see right now with this overhead camera, I've got a slider so I can zoom in on my desk. This is using 1080p. Um, this is one of those apps as well that you can either pay monthly, you know, annually, or you can do a lifetime license. Um, it's available and I know definitely in the Apple app store, I believe it's available for Google as well. Um, but this is another way kind of going back to what Chris is talking about with filmic that you can use your phone as your webcam, as opposed to feeling like you got to go in, out and buy a, a camera or even a webcam. I mean, this is yeah. made it easy for us because you can use tripods, you can get yourself in different angles. Uh, it just really really makes things uh, work well. So I'll go back to my other look. Yeah. So um, Tina, let us know like what your, what the rest of your setup is. So you've got your iPod touch. You want to use as your camera. Are you, is it a, is it a Mac? Is it a PC? Um, you know, what are the, um, I guess, let us know what other stuff you've got going on, like software that you want to use. Um, are you using it for Zoom? Are you using it for, like, that would help us kind of like, okay, well, you know, you know, because there's, when you're, when you're using a phone as a camera, there's, th you know, you have to, like, you, you may need an adapter. You may need a hub mm -hmm. to where you can plug in an HDMI cable. So um, let me just show you this. So this is what I use when I want to plug my iPhone um, directly into my switcher and use it um, to broadcast. Uh, but I need to use Filmic Pro and I need this, uh, which is an adapter that goes into my iPhone or in your case, your iPod Touch. And on one side, I can plug in an HDMI cable. The other side is power if I need it. And then the other end of my HDMI cable goes into my switcher. Now, you don't need a switcher, but you need something on your computer that allows you to stream that digital signal. And a lot of people use a cam link uh, from Elgato uh, that you plug into your HDMI and that you can plug, you can plug that into or any mirrorless or DSLR camera that will allow you to, uh, to do that. I, ho I, I, I hope that helps you. Let us know, um, uh, if, if that does and, you know, maybe what your, what your setup is. Um, but yeah, Filmic Pro, um, is, it's an app that allows you to take nice pictures too. If it, so it's a little more versatile. The NDI app is just the, it allows you to use the technology of sending video um, to your computer through 
other software that allows for it because we use a thing called eCam and it allows us to do all the bells and whistles and create scenes in, in a normal day I can hit a button and it all does it but you know today it's deciding to be ornery on me um, but um, eCam recognizes NDI and we could pull that camera in really easily so depending on how what you've got running and what you want to use it for I think I think we we may be able to help you kind of figure that out so we're happy to to walk through that if you want so if anybody yeah. else has got any questions you know let us know Marcia's got one over on LinkedIn and it's like how do you download on your platform from the Zoom H6 uh, I'll throw that over to you Chris yeah so um before my iPad goes to sleep. So the Zoom H6 has a uh, an SD card in it. And so um, when you record your podcast, well, you could do it two ways, Marcia. You can, um, you can use it as a regular interface. So let's just say you want to record your podcast and you have a Mac and it's GarageBand, or you have a PC and it's Audacity, whatever is, is the software that you use. Your Zoom H6 can be used as an interface, so all your microphones or whatever are plugged into it. That goes into your computer, and you could set it as, as your interface in your software. And so when you hit record, and then you hit, or you hit record in your, uh, in your software, whatever you're saying or whatever you're recording uh, or playing will be recorded on your computer directly. That's, that's what the interface does. It, it says, okay, uh, Signal, I'm making you digital and I'm, I'm recording you on the computer. You can use that and it's good for that. But I, what I do is I, I take it and I can record it wherever I want and records it on that SD card. And so if I did a podcast with four people, um, I just, I light up all the tracks, I record it. And each one of those, um, each one of those uh people has a singular track. And so I just pull those into what's called a DAW. It stands for Digital Audio Workstation. And there's there's a there's a hundred of them, but the ones you probably have heard of are Adobe Audition, uh, Logic Pro, um, Reaper. Um, there's a bunch of different uh, ones. GarageBand is free with Mac. Uh, Audacity is free software, just like OBS is free video software. Audacity is that for, for audio. You pull those tracks in and then you can mix it. You can say, well, this person coughed in this track, so I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to cut that out. And then I'm going to raise this person's voice up because they had the microphone pointed up at their ear. And then you can, you can that's what I do all day is, is edit that kind of stuff. If you didn't want to mess, mess with any of the editing, you could just record it all as one track. So if you got four people, you can record all of them as one track. That for me is a nightmare because I, I like everything to sound uniform. And so I like to have multiple tracks that I can mix. And so I, it all is recorded on that, on that SD card. I plug that SD card into my computer, drag it into my DAW, my digital audio workstation. And then you're in it to win it like Tina. How's right. that? Right. And so Marcia is saying she did purchase her Mac in August of 2020. So it sounds like it's maybe pre M1. So that's, that's a pretty, pretty good computer. I, I will say that the M1 chips yeah. definitely revolutionized things for us. Uh, you know, because like actually the one you're using right now is not an M1 and maybe that's why uh, uh, Elgato is not playing nice right now. Who knows? But uh, cause you got a lot of things going on when you're, when you're doing this stuff. Um, but yeah, I think Tina, you're, you're being smart about, right. Yep. No need to rush into it. Yep. Figure That's out a, what you're trying to do with your content, right? Cause a lot of this short form content is vertical video, not horizontal. That's right. And so the iPod is probably great for you to start with. And, you know, you just take it a, take it a step at a time. Well, Chris, you're doing all kinds of weird stuff on the screen. Yeah, here. Not on purpose. <laughs> I have gremlins in my Mac. <laughs> um, and Tina, you, it's this is true. This is what um, this is what we stress to um, to a lot of people, and you that's the that's the perfect mindset. You don't need to buy six hundred dollar Road Roadcaster Pro and a four hundred dollar Shure SM Seven B um, yet. Now. You know, what I what I tell everybody is get the one that you can you can 
use, you know, like it's intimidating. That sure SM7B, you, you got to buy, you got to, I mean, it's a fantastic microphone. I can't wait until I get one. Um, but you also have to know the, how the nuances of it, the, the, you have to, it, it's a gain hungry mic and you got to add all this other stuff. It just becomes like all of that stuff gets in the way of you doing what you should be doing, which is using your voice and, and having confidence in, and, you know, on the camera, into the mic, all of the things, whatever you're wanting to do, Tina, you know, if, if the gear gets in the way, that's why we're here is, is to say, you know what, if this microphone works, you know, this camera works, you don't have to spend, uh, uh, you know, 750 bucks on, on a camera like I have in front of me, then uh, the, your iPhone uh, that, that you have in your pocket might work. And yeah. then once you figure that out and then you go, you know what, I really do want something. Okay. Well, let then, then let's talk about, you know, leveling up to the set or the other. And, and there's, there's some really, there's some really great stuff that people are making. I mean, if there's one thing that's a positive, I think that might be coming out of this whole thing we've been going through here for the past couple of years is that a lot of companies are making some great stuff because there's a lot of people that are doing podcasts and starting bands and uh, realizing virtual is, is, is here. It's just too bad. The supply chain's so screwed up that we can't, right. we can't get it. Uh, but the tech is, the tech is pretty amazing. Yeah. And, and you brought up a good point. And so one of the things I want to highlight for, for some of you out there as you're trying to figure things out. So this is a mm -hmm. camera that I was using all the time. This is the Logitech stream cam. Yeah. And let me see if this will work. Let me get my hand behind it. There we go. The beauty of this is this camera will allow you probably got too much light going on. That's a little better. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That this will let you go horizontal or vertical by just moving this camera from this way, right? You just pop mm -hmm. it out of this uh, thing and now it'll record vertically. It's got a microphone built in. I might have did it upside down, but that's okay. I'm not using it. But it also can be put on a tripod. So you get a tripod like we have as well in the carousel, like the, the UB size. That UB size 67 inch will fold down to like 12 inches and go all the way up to 67 inches. So you can put this on a tripod, give yourself the ability to move around. But this will, you know, this is a USB-C input, comes with the Logitech software that lets you do some nice stuff as well if you're recording. And so... But this could be something that maybe you want to consider if you're using your computer as a source for recording your video and, you know, once you maybe want to get away. But one of the things I want to bring up, Tina, sounds like you're doing some stuff that's more mobile. That is the other thing to consider. Are you a mobile producer or are you someone like Chris right now and I are in studio? But that's not to say we don't go out and record stuff away from our studios. You know, we... When we're doing product videos, we're in different places. Right. So it's not always the computer that's going to work for us. And that's where these phones can really be helpful in the software that Chris was talking about as well. Yeah, so I've got the uh, the UB size that you were talking about here. If we want to um, pop that, yep. um, I will go to, let's just go to this look here. And then I'll go to, let me just go to overhead now that I'm looking at that. And there we go. So yeah, Jim, Jim, you turned me onto this. Um, this was on sale um, not too long ago. Um, and you could just see, like it has four different spots where we can flip this and extend it um, out. So it goes very, very high when you need it, uh, need it to. It's solid. Um, and you could see, I mean, you can get it down to this size. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you could use it on your desk if you wanted to and have the, have the camera, like I, I have pointed, um, uh, got a smaller one on the other size if you wanted to, but I do like this too, Jim is, uh, you can, um, I don't know. Okay. Now we're, now we're freezing up a little bit. Oh, Jesus gremlins all over the place. Um, these move around. So if you're not on flat space, you're, you know, kind of like, you know, on, in, in the ground, but you still want something level. Um, I really like the way that is. And if you you want it to weigh down, there's a little hook here that you yep. can hook a weight to. Yeah, if you're in a windy spot, hold. yeah, you, you never know, right? You, you, you might need that. Um, yeah, Nina, that's a, this is a, a tripod called the uh, UB size 67 inch. And Chris, I want to say that this came with 
the uh, phone mount, right? So you can yes put that I'm, on top. I'm, I'm using that phone. I'm yeah. using that very phone mount for my uh, for my side camera here that I have. Uh, I should have I should have grabbed mine. I've got it somewhere around here. But yeah, I'm, I'm that using it mount for, uh, will let you go horizontal or vertical. So that's the other nice thing that and it'll fit any size smartphone. So if you've got you know big iPhone, big Galaxy phone, that will definitely work. And so I think that's uh, something that works out great. Um, okay, so we got a good question from Tina. She goes, I was on someone's live stream via Discord recently and realized I didn't like the way my voice sounded. So it's good to know I can use the Sennheiser Fire Dynamic because I like the tone it gets out of my vocals. That is very important. That's something Chris and I talk about yeah. a lot is the not every microphone is going to be right for you. Yes. You want to find the microphone that you like like you, Chris might go buy the uh the the uh what was it? The SM7B, Chris, I think you're talking about and yeah. find out like I don't like the way my voice sounds with People it. have done that. People have thought, "Well, how come I how come I don't sound like Joe Rogan?" You know? How come I don't uh, you know? And, uh, it, well, it's because, you know, it just doesn't work for everyone. And if you like the way that, uh, that mic so sounds for you, the best thing you could do is, is whenever you're recording, make sure that you're recording in well carpeted, uh, you know, put stuff in the room, put fluffy stuff in the room, fill the room with stuff, make it smaller, you know, um, you know, like, I won't turn the camera around, but it's, it, you know, like a lot of the stuff that's around me and, and, and around Jim as well is there to protect the sound above you and around you and below you. Cause your voice bounces off every, my voice is bouncing off of my computer screen right now. And it's going back into my microphone. That's that echoey sound. Like sometimes you get on a zoom and it sounds like somebody's in a, like a metal cavern. That's because they're in a big, bright room and they've got a microphone that's cranked up and it's get, and all that does is crank up the gain and pick up all of the noise. But if you get that microphone close to your mouth and you're in a small dead room or a smaller dead room, your mic's going to sound the best it possibly can. And so sometimes you can take a $30 mic and sound better to some people have that are two $300 mics because they just don't mm -hmm. know how to use it. And so, I, you know, Tina, if you know, yeah, and the, that echoey audio does drive me nuts as well. Um, and like I said, you know, audio is the most important thing for video. And, you know, it's, it certainly is the only thing when it comes to audio podcasts. But when it comes to doing a video, if your audio is, is just out of control, it's just going to it's going to people are going to cruise. They just don't like later. I can't I can't deal with that noise. What's that clicking noise or how come I, how come I can hear all that, all that other stuff that's going on in the room, like the, you know, the humidifier and all this other stuff that's going on, you know, yeah. it, it just, it, you know, and, and all that stuff is, doesn't cost any money, right. you know, it's just like, it's mic technique, speak across your microphone, not into it, get it close to yourself, get it off your desk and get a boom arm. We've got a couple of boom arm options in the, uh, in the carousel ones, uh, in gear, which is. I've got six Inno Gear boom arms, the ones that you do. They're fourteen dollars or something like that. Those are awesome. They got a clamp, and you just get it. You clamp it to your desk and suspend it, and get a little shock mount for your microphone. Boom! Like you're gonna you're gonna sound you're gonna, you're not gonna sound as good as Jim Fuse, unfortunately. No one is ever in the history of the world, but you're gonna sound closer to Jim Fuse. All right, I all right, think. I'm trying something brave. Hopefully, hopefully this will work. Are you still uh -oh. here? Can you oh, are you going to do the road? I'm, I'm doing the road. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. I can. So I'm, I'm actually using the Rode Wireless Go right now. This is a wireless mic. that It comes with two transmitters, and it's got one receiver. The receiver is plugged into my computer, and, you know, I can now, you know, move away. It, it, this will actually work. I've heard two, 300 feet line of sight. That's pretty significant. Um, and it also is recording to the receiver and so if i wanted this audio and wanted to you know as chris would say wanted to uh attract this i'm gonna make sure i highlight it here in the uh, carousel and i'm using the lapel mic you don't need the lapel but i like the lapel because otherwise i look like i'm talking into a beeper and so 
Uh, that's a great point, though, Tina, as well, right? You can only to tolerate so much thing. But that goes back to Chris's point about sound treatment. I have a drop ceiling. I mean, I could still probably do better, but I'm also on carpet. And so that's helping, uh, you know, keep some of the sounds from bouncing. But, you know, it, Chris has done a lot, right? He's got, what is it, rock, rock wall? Right yeah, term? rock wall um, insulation. Yeah, I can yep. uh, I can even show you show you what I did. Should yep. I do that? Yeah, let me yeah. do that. Yeah, let do that. Fun. Well, I uh, yeah. Ooh. So you can kind of see there's a difference in how my audio sounds when I'm using this microphone over when I was using this because this one will pick up a little bit more sound uh, than say the Samson. But if I need to be moving around, I don't want to be tied to having to be right next to my microphone. That's one thing. Now, Chris and I both are now starting to, uh, I don't know if the right word would be experiment, Chris, with, um, with some of these uh, boom mics. And that's something that uh, you'll probably see us using here in the, in the near future to kind of give you an idea of what a boom mic does and how that would be on top of my camera here. And I could talk to it, but it might still capture some sounds I don't necessarily want to get captured. So it's really important to understand your environment. But these as well, I can take the receiver for the road, plug it into my phone with the cable like Chris was talking about. And so I can actually be using this microphone with my phone on a tripod. So, you know, I can have somebody maybe following me around with a phone. And now, so now it's not like when I've got my phone and I'm like trying to talk like this, I can actually get a better, you know, view. I can have somebody maybe doing a little bit of zooming as I'm re recording, really helping you come up with some better uh, content, you know, and, and of course, uh, you know, that's where you might think about a gimbal, some other things, but you know, that's, it's a not all necessary right away. And you can, and even, even that UV size tripod that we were talking about can somewhat be used as a way, if you want to think of it as a gimbal, because it's solid. If somebody holds it, it's, you know, there's a, a difference between holding a phone with your hand versus holding it with a tripod. And so that's, that's something you might want to consider. Yeah. Those are, uh, those are great points, Jim. Uh, I was going to show real quick. I'm going to, yep. things are a little shaky, but I'm going to grab my phone right now that I've got on my overhead and I'm using a Ulanzi overhead um, thing. I'm just going to show you really quickly. Um, and then Jim, you brought up the shotgun mic. So I was, I thought, well, what better way for, uh, for me to, it's, things are a little shaky. So I'm sorry if it's making you a, a little queasy, a little queasy here, but Jim was just talking about this type of microphone and this is a road video mic too. And that is a shotgun, uh, microphone. And the reason why I have it mounted on top of my camera is because whenever I'm doing product video demonstrations for recorded uh, product videos here on Amazon, or when I'm going to be using it um, uh, when, when I'm going to San Diego in a couple of weeks and when I'm going to um, Orlando in a couple of months, I'll want a really good shotgun mic and it's directional. So it's pointed right at my mouth where I'm talking and it's going to, it's going to pick up some other stuff, unlike the microphone I'm speaking into right now, because I'm right on top of the microphone I'm speaking to right now, but mm -hmm. it does a really good job of that. And that's what a shotgun mic uh, does. And then my phone was hanging on this, which is a, and I'm sorry, you're going to be blinded by my key lights right here. Those key lights are Viltrox key lights, which are also in the, uh, in the carousel. I've got those. I just want to make sure we're, we're covering everything in the carousel, Amazon, if you're watching. Um, but uh, anyway, that's, uh, this is Ulanzi. Uh, this thing I love because you can see it's so versatile. I can move it around and it tightens up and it has really good balance. And I clamp it right down here on the side of my desk. And there's my little GoPro. That's my other um, my side camera that I use. It's a little old school Hero 4. And so that is the Ulanzi uh, thing. And then there's my other key light over there. So how about that? Um, so anyway, that's a little peek backstage. I hope that helps you in terms of uh, microphones and the setup here. And um, the, I wanted to get that Ulanzi in, uh, in the mix there. Monty Weaver's in the house. Good What's to see up, you, Monty. Monty? Um, Monty is, uh, 
doing a great, uh, great job as far as uh, he, he runs a Facebook group for uh, us fellow creators that we love being a part of. And Chris and I are honored that we're going to be on Monty's show on Monday. So, uh, Monty, please share your channel in the chat. Thank you for uh, for stopping by. We know you're a, a very busy man, but we definitely appreciate you the taking the management. time this time. <laughs> are you making fun of my cable management right now, Monty? Now you, are you throwing you might, shade on you my might, cables? You might make you might make fun of your your stream deck today, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I can't believe you, dude. Um, so what was, uh, what was the, uh, what was the next thing we were going to talk about? Uh, uh so, you know, Monty, Monty, Monty Weaver, like talking, uh, talking about my cable management just threw me for a loop. Well, you were talking, you were talking about your overhead. Um, I, I mean, we've talked right. about a lot of things. Um, let's see what we, we haven't talked about your camera cause my camera's not available. Do you want to talk about the right? Sony? Yeah. So the Sony, um, well, you saw it there uh, with it was uh, it was the video mic was sitting atop the ZV-1, uh, and I think you could still get a ZV-1, right? But your E10s, yes. which is the uh, the latest model, is uh, not available right now, uh, thanks to supply chain and and not being able to get uh, the chip uh, for that. But the, it's a fantastic uh, camera for someone that wants a super high quality, like plug and play microphone. Or I'm sorry, plug and play camera, and um, you know it. They they made some improvements with the E10, no doubt. Um, and uh, but I think it is a more affordable option for you if you're just you just want a simple sort of throw it on a throw it on a gimbal. It's got a stabilization thing on it, so it so if you use it with the uh, this thing that comes with it. Yes. Um, and so it's not a gimbal, right? A gimbal is going to float around, float around with your, um, your with shakiness, your <laughs> right? Uh, but it does have stabilization that's built into that, as as does the uh, the E10, and so you're going to be able to control it. This is much more for like vlogging um, mm -hmm. and doing uh, doing stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, that's the uh, that is the Sony ZV1, and uh, yeah, I love it, love, love, love it. Um, and, uh, you know, I got my eyeballs on a, on another camera too. So who knows? I may need to, uh, may need to figure out what I'm going to do there. Right. Yeah. And then, and then another thing too, that Chris's camera is actually plugged into is, and mine is as well, is the black magic ATEM, uh, mini switcher. And so Chris, you want to talk a little bit about why you might want a switcher even as a podcaster? Jim, I thought you'd never ask. Um, and as I look for the scene, <laughs> this, this, my stream deck just like, it just goes to show you that like, you know, me without a you stream never know. deck is like right. here. So yeah, I'm grabbing my Ulanzi, which is going to allow me to do something like this, is take my uh, overhead camera and get, get myself a little bit more in line to where I can show it to you. Let's mm -hmm. put myself over here and turn this like so, so that you can see it. And we're giving there, Monty some stable management. Monty, yeah, there you, there you go. There's some good ammo for you there, Monty. Um, and we're going to do this. All right. This is a Blackmagic ATEM Mini Pro ISO. They make different versions. They made now, they, these new ones are called Extreme. And this will, um, the reason why you get this is it allows you to switch cameras. And so if I hit this right here, if you see me in the upper left-hand corner, if I hit it, it's going to switch to my other camera, which is over here, down here. So when I hit that and I go back to that, I'm going back to that. Now, there is software that allows you to do that. Um, but the more you do that with software, the more stress it puts on your computer and its resources. So the more you can use uh, hardware in order to offset that. It's like, you know, my, my, uh, my interface that I use, it actually, the plugins and all of the stuff that I use, it actually, inside of this, it, it takes the resources away from the computer. 
Um, so you, when you're, especially when you're doing a show uh, that has bells and whistles and uh, you, know, you failed a little bit earlier, you want to make sure that uh, you're using hardware that, that offsets uh, your computer's resources and allows you to do tricky things like switching cameras. I also have a mic here that's plugged in. So the shotgun mic that you saw earlier, I actually plug it into my switcher and I use my switcher as my mic input when I'm recording uh, product videos. You can use that with a 1 8 inch um, uh, input that, that goes right into my Rode uh, uh, video mic too. Um, there's all kinds of other things you can do. You can do a little picture in picture where if you have uh, multiple cameras and you wanna switch it around, you can pull it in if you wanted to do that. Um, let me see if I can even get it going. I've got the Ecamm scene over top of it, so you're not even gonna see it. All right. So I'll turn that, I'll turn that off. But that's really what it's for. And, um, you know, that's, and a lot of people will use it and think, or, or the, and this is another thing where if you have reasons to use it, you can see I've got three cameras that are plugged into it. Um, I can plug in another uh, iPhone if I want to. That's the third camera. I have the, my main camera is in one and camera two is that side camera that I showed you right there. Um, so if you have uh, viable reasons to use a switcher, then definitely um, it's, it's worthwhile. It also, we, are, we talked earlier to Tina about her using her, uh, her iPhone or her iPod touched as a camera. You're going to need some sort of transference and some sort of, you know, way to, uh, to make this an HDMI signal to go into your computer. And so that's what this allows you to do, because each one of these is an HDMI input. But you can always, if you just have one, you can get always get a cam link uh, that uh, Elgato makes, and just plug that into your computer. You won't need a switcher unless you need multiple cameras. So, so question from uh, from Monty is, he sees the Sandisk there. He goes, can you? Uh, does that work well with your ATEM for recording ISOs? You know what? Monty, you ask good questions, man. You ask good questions. The answer is yes. Um, and it was the it was the original reason why I got it um, was to was to do that. It was to record uh, multiple videos uh, with the ISO and have separate video tracks. And you can do that. You can have that plugged in. And the reason why is it's it's extreme. So it's uh, it's Thunderbolt, and so the I'm sorry, my cable is just, hang on. This cable just, man. This is just, I'm not having a, I'm not having a good cable night. <laughs> just not having a good cable night. And, and another Yeti got its wings because Anna O started following us. Anna! Another Yeti gets its wings, another blue Yeti. All right, I think I could finally talk about this, Jim. Maybe. Um, God, without a stream deck, this is just a... I swear it's usually better than this, guys. Let's see, is this the one? No, that's not the one. Well, you know what? Let's just go with my overhead... And we will go and, no, that's not going to work. All right, Jim. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go with the overhead, and I'm just going to. Yeah, Monty, if you missed it earlier, we had a uh, snafu uh, with, and so my stream deck died, and so I've basically been uh, what's uh, stream deckless. Um, so. Yes, 
this thing works. Uh, Monty, I actually edit videos and use this, uh, use library files and write video off of my Mac M1 onto this. And it's faster than an external, than, than the internal hard drive. So you just, you know, it's, it's incredible how awesome this is. Now this is a, the one terabyte, they make a two terabyte, get the extreme and it, um, and I also use it with, with the switcher as well. I've done it. I haven't done, a, done it a lot. I wish I had done it, um, a little bit more, but yeah, you can plug it. You could basically use the, the ISO video that you get from, from the switcher on, onto this. And right now I'm just starting to learn how to use companion. Uh, Monty, I don't know oh. if you use companion. Um, and the Phil Hills in the house, what's up? Um, companion allows you, if you network your, your switcher, um, into your computer, you can actually program your stream deck. So like I will have a button to be able to switch cameras on the stream deck. I'm sorry, on the switcher with the stream deck, um, as well. So I'm starting to, starting to do a little YouTube university with, uh, with that. But this thing is, uh, one of my little secret weapons, especially since I have like a downstairs studio and then I have another office space. I just, sometimes I'll just put huge video files on here and just, you know, if I'm working on one computer, I take it to another computer and it, and it, recognizes all the stuff that I was writing on library files and pops it up with it in another computer because it's just basically like ha like taking the guts from your computer to uh, to another um, it's fantastic and it's super rugged you know and I'm a klutz and I drop things all over the place so uh, <laughs> love this thing that's awesome yeah and we had we had uh, I think it's uh, I I'll Ellie Cole or Isle Cole over on uh, LinkedIn was asking how we were mm -hmm. streaming. And I told her we're actually using Ecamm as a virtual cam in the stream yard. And then stream yards allowing us to multi-stream. I know some people use restream, but we just, you know, we like how stream yard works. Dot video. Yeah. There's some other stuff coming out. You'll see us playing around with that. Uh, there's some competitors that are all creating ways for you to create scenes, which is one of the things we love about Ecamm. Uh, and and uh, Wave.video and EVMux are browser-based, just like StreamYard, so you don't have to download the software. And you can use it on a Windows computer for all our Windows friends out there because, uh, you know, you want to look, you know, because Ecamm doesn't work on Windows. But, but, uh, and I don't think it ever will. They they pretty much said, hey, we're Mac-only uh, you know, so there, there's our people, program. People are buying Macs so they can have Ecamm. That's how that's working. <laughs> yes, yes. I don't know. They should get a commission from Apple, right? But I don't know that they do. No. Oh, I know what we were going to talk about. Sound treatment. Yes. Um, and we don't, there's no such thing as rock wool insulation, unfortunately, in, uh, in the, on Amazon. There should. So we're going to put a request in for that. But you see all the stuff that's hanging um, behind me. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, you got to, it's like, it's all sound treated. Um, and it's important again, as a, as someone who's on video, your audio is great. And, uh, you want to make sure that you've got fluffy stuff in your room and it's, and it's carpeting and whatnot. So I'm going to try to pull this off. Um, but this is, uh, Miles Davis. Everybody knows who Miles Davis is. Very, very. Uh, he's 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 my Elvis, basically. Um, but <laughs> this is just a canvas print, um, and you can get uh, custom canvas prints. Like I've got a couple uh, for for deal casters that are around uh, me as well. And um, it's these are wood frames, and this is a canvas print. And basically, I've, I'm just going to pull this off so you guys can see the insulation that's inside of this. Let me get this to where you can see it. So this is fabric that's holding. And the inside, is, it's also uh, fireproof. It's fireproof and soundproof insulation. It's by a company called Rockwell. And yeah, there we go. Now you can see it. Yep. This is the stuff that's inside. And that is treating the sound. You could probably already hear how my my voice changed when I held it up close, yeah. Because because 
it's not bouncing off of anything now. And so it's just better. It's just, you know, you want your, you don't want reverb on your voice when you're doing any sort of show or podcast or anything. Great, Jim. Now I got to staple this back together. Thanks. <laughs> but Amazon does have the ability for you to get those frames made if you, if that's something that you're, uh, wall 26 is the company. That's, that's what we use to, to make, um, to make these. I've got, uh, some behind me. Let me see if I could switch here. I keep on looking to my stream deck to make a switch, Jim. It's really just insane. I know. So that behind me, that VidFest uh, thing right there, is is a canvas print that's filled with uh, that insulation. You can see that one over there, another Miles Davis album cover. That's a Santana. Um, all filled with insulation. They're all. It's all sound treatment. It's all meant <laughs> to um, make it. Uh, I have said that to people, and they're like, "What's reverb?" <laughs> God bless you, Tina. God bless you. And and L and L over on LinkedIn said she could definitely hear the difference when you had that up next to you. So yeah, it, it's those little things that we don't always mm -hmm. realize, and that's why to our friends that have followed us and allowed some blue yetis to get their wings, that is sometimes the challenge with the blue yeti is that they because it does pick up all the sound. Sound treatment's even more important. I mean. Don't get us wrong. We know some people that are very successful with the Blue Yeti. Um, but like Chris was showing, the if you've got the Blue Yeti on the desk and you start tapping your desk, it's going to get picked up. So if some people will actually put it up in a shock mount like Chris talked about. And so then it like, you know, looks like it's hanging down. Yeah. Um, at, at the very least, you should do that with any mic. Like the, right. it comes with this huge stand that sits, and it's already a microphone that's very sensitive to to sound. And now you're adding more vibrations to it, which is sound. And so, at the very least, you should take it out of this stand and put it on a boom arm, and you know, uh, get it get it to where you're speaking directionally in the right direction on your mic, which is in the front, right there, not here, not the top right there and then um you know listen you can get what you can get this to sound good you really can for your voice and tina talked about it earlier it's like hey i like the way this particular mic sounds on my voice awesome that's the mm -hmm. right mic for you it could be you know some weird off brand you know i, I don't know i don't uh, you know but we're not going to take that works risk. for you like that gets you <laughs> to do your podcast sooner you know right. then you're not worried about it. you're not stressed about it. you're not thinking oh how does my voice sound Oh, mm -hmm. you know, like, uh, do I need a better mic? You know, you're, you're, you're actually worried about the content and you're, you're freed up and you get to, you get to speak and you get to, uh, you get better at what's most important, which is your content. You know, yes. people have this pristine audio, but they're not saying anything. It's kind of like, well, you know, you took all this time to make yourself sound great. Now, what are you saying? You know, mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. what's that's what's important, really. Right, Chris. Let's talk for a minute too, because you made me think about something as we're talking about podcasting. You're wearing your Audio Technica headphones. Normally, you've been wearing, or you're those aren't the Audio Technica. No, these are Sennheisers. Okay, yeah. uh, but I've we also had the Audio Technicas. But I've we're, got you here. know, in ear monitors, which I'm using versus what we like to call cans or the radio disc jockey look, or I guess even sometimes the guys on, uh, you know, sports casters on TV is I, I am getting sound isolation. I'm not having to worry about the audio going into my microphone for me hearing. That's another thing, right? We talk about echo cancellation. Mm -hmm. We always tell people that you should wear. Now, the only time you don't need to wear headphones, if you think about it, is if you're recording and you don't have anybody else around you. You don't need to wear the headphones unless you want to hear what you sound like. But otherwise, what you tend to see people do, this happens a lot on Zooms, is people are using their speakers from their computer to listen. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? That's going into your microphone. And that's what causes that echo that you hear that makes everybody crazy. Like when a, you know people used to scratch chalk on a chalkboard. So that's where this is important. Now, with the bigger headphones like Chris has, if you're doing editing, you got to, you want to truly hear the sound. So as, as much as I like these in ear monitors, not something I would want to use if I'm doing audio editing, because I'm not going to get all those 
That's sounds right. like Chris will with the my, the headphones he's wearing. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up. So um, that's a that's a wonderful uh, transition because a lot of people don't understand that. And Jim, you and I work with podcasters every day. And uh, they'll show up for their podcast and I'll ask them where their headphones are. And they're like, why, why do I have to wear headphones? And people don't understand why. And you just, you, when you explain it to them, because it's going to sound bad if you don't. Mm -hmm. um, you may think it sounds okay, but what's happening on our end is we're hearing your voice slap back at us twice. So you got to have something that, um, that does that. And if you're looking for headphones, you need to make sure that you're getting the headphones that are functional for what you need them for. And so uh, some people were like, I, you know, I want one pair of headphones. And so what they do, they get their AirPods. Now the AirPods, you know, are, listen, for what, they are, what they're intended for, great. I mean, they're cool. They work really well with Apple devices and all of that. For podcasts, awful. I'm just, I'm sorry. They're, they just don't work for podcasts. I, you know, it, it will work, but it's like, it's a bit of a nightmare. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, they pull one out and then like the whole thing disconnects and it's Bluetooth and they're, you know, and so right now I've got cans on, on my ears. Um, and I typically use in-ear monitors, uh, but today I opted for the cans. Um, and I use these to edit because I want to hear exactly what is supposed to be heard um, on, you know, when I'm, when I'm editing video or an editing podcast, if you get these, um, uh, these other headphones, they may add like a bass and all kinds of other stuff. And it's not really the authentic sound. And so I put a pair of headphones in the carousel that I own and that are upstairs and they're by Sony. Mm -hmm. And they're, um, these are, these have stood the test of time. These are uh, considered monitors. They're studio monitors. This is what, this is every studio worth its, you know, money uses these studio monitor headphones because what you hear is what you get. Everything coming through and into your ears is exactly the sound that is, is coming out of the instrument, is coming out of the computer, it's coming like that's exactly what it's intended. If you've got a bass heavy uh, pair of headphones and you're mixing something, guess what's gonna, guess what your mix is gonna sound like? It's gonna sound this big because you had all this bass that was pumped in and you thought you had to take it all out. Mm -hmm. But the real true sound is what you should be working with. So, but if you want it, maybe they sound better with your music. Okay, cool. That's why that's why I have six pairs of headphones because I have a pair that that is perfect for what I need it to do. These are great for me mm -hmm. listening to music. These are great for me editing. These are great for me, you know, just as monitor, you know, whatever. So I'm I'm glad you brought that up and it's imp there's an important distinction and personally, I think if you're going to get one pair of headphones, that's going to do what you need. If, if you got to do all of those things, the options we've got there, the audio technica, uh, options, there's a 50 X there's a, there's a, um, I've got 30 X as well. Jim, I know, um, Karen, your wife uses the thirties as well. Audio technica for, for especially as the affordability on those things mm -hmm. will give you authentic, sound as a monitor but also are very responsive to uh to music and and so i i highly recommend audio technica uh headphones um i had a white squishy pair that i used super comfortable on the ears super comfortable on the ears like look at look at how squishy these are jim i know right they're so squishy look and if you're gonna and if you're gonna have them on all day yes right? exactly that that's what's so important about it Definitely, definitely agree with that. As, as we like to say, 110%, not just 100, 110%. Trying to find All right, Jim, are we, uh, are, are we through the I think, carousel? I, I think we, we've uh, passed the test. Uh, we, we got through most of the things. We have a couple books in here. Uh, if you're looking to start a podcast, Dave Jackson's uh, Profit from Your Podcast. We had Dave on an early episode of... Uh, deal casters when we first started out and we also turned that i believe into a podcast is that correct chris that is correct it was part of the initial launch of our podcast along with chris kremitzos and jennifer watson 
And uh, Tina, thank you, thank you for joining us. Please let us know if this if the, if you if this ends up helping you. That's the reason why Jim and I do this is not so that we can you know get a bunch of money or whatever. Like we genuinely want to uh, make sure that we're helping you. And if it helps you launch your show and you know whatever you've got going on, we want to you know we, check back with us. Let us know how it's how it's going. And yes, it was a pleasure chatting with you as as well. I'm I'm just so glad I got to say your name really fast 10 times. I think I flubbed up on one of them though. Yeah. And oh, we got uh, Chuck. Uh, thank you for following us. Oh, you just gave another. I, I met, uh, I met, if that's the explain. same Chuck Sirik uh, that I met today um, on the, uh, the Big Ticket Life uh, oh. podcast, uh, he and his wife Janet were guests on Jeff Janakovo's podcast that I, uh, that I produced. Nice. Uh, Chuck, is that you? Let us know, uh, in the, uh, in the chat and Chuck today, uh, for every follower, um, a blue Yeti gets its wings. How about that? We got to, we got to see this thing fly across the screen a couple of times. This thing's got more action. Uh, today than it has in, uh, in quite some time. I'm going to using this as my workout device and while we're <laughs> doing the, I mean, because these things are pretty heavy, so I don't need weights. I got a Blue Yeti. Um. <laughs> that is pretty heavy. I'm just yeah. glad it didn't drop. And we also, uh, Holly Jackson's book, Zero to Podcast, and both, I believe, oh, Holly shit. and Dave will be at PodFest slash VidFest where we will be speaking with some of the folks that visited as well today, Monty and Geraldine at uh, an all day event, part of a four day event in beautiful Orlando, Florida. Can't wait. And uh, so if you're interested and if you use the code Amazon, 20% off your ticket. 20% off with code Amazon. If that ain't a deal, I don't know what is. Ladies yep. and gentlemen, thank you for hanging out with us today. Um, Tina, you're the best. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you laughing at our bad dad jokes, too. Um, but uh, in any event, uh, thanks again for hanging out with us. Um, I'm Chris. That's Jim. We're Dealcasters. And as always, don't fear the gear. <laughs>